Hello everyone, my name is Trygve Möller and I'm from Tantank, a company based originally on Donsö and we are placed there with ship management and then own a company in Denmark, in Sko, which we were forced to search political asyl a couple of years ago. Uh, I'm here together with uh, Östen, technical manager, and uh, where are you, Östen? There we are. And Christine from the chartering department. Me and Östen has been in Tantank since we quit number nine grade in school. And we normally say, very often say, that uh, no new fuels until we retire. We are fed up to change fuel, but we have to change again. <laughs> to, that will be the phase. <laughs> we, we have to live with it. That is our fleet today. Uh, we have 12 vessels, and we are very glad that we have three in time charter to your company, Exxon. And uh, uh, the newest one, the four newest one, Exxon has one of them, Tern uh, Fjord, which we are working very close together with Exxon with new low boils. And uh, uh, it's a very good cooperation, we can say. They are working hard and dedicated to get a low boil which fits into LNG. What have we done until today? Uh, Back in 2011, we start. We, 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 Tantank has a tradition, uh, so we are just following a tradition to, to try to implement new rules and uh, also try to make business around them. Uh, two reasons, earn money, but also that we are very interested. Uh, we are living in the middle of uh, a sea, which we have the sea around us, and uh, of course uh, it's our responsibility to keep it clean and have the environmental around us uh, as good as possible to the next generation. So it's, it's very natural for us to work with these things. It's not, uh, it's not, it's natural. Together with customer, we installed the SCR and we installed Lean Marine uh, fuel optimizer a couple of years ago, completely frequency converters uh, uh, in our Edward vessel. And uh, since the, we started uh, exercise, we have uh, lowered the consumption with 4,400 tons. Then we are very glad that we, together with some time chartered clients and also within. Kua uh, on Spot Voyage, we have worked with very hard with this uh, virtual ETA. Today it's renamed, it's called JIT, just in time. Uh, it's a very hard thing to coming over. There is a lot of uh, bottlenecks related to notice of readiness, to net, uh, how to split. Uh, fuel consumption, uh, saving in fuel consumption, but uh, together with Prim and also some other, we have been able to do it and we have operated now two, three years and we are saving around 85 tons. That is only in Kua. In time shorter you can uh, at least three double it. So that we are doing each and every day now. Then we, as you all know, taking delivery of uh, four high-tech vessels with LNG dual fuel. We was take, the last one was August last year. We are a small company, but, but we was able to take out four uh, product chemical tankers, these, these sisters, in nine months. So it was a challenge, but now they are in service and working very, very good. And of course, that is our mission, all of us, to reduce the environmental footprints in the transport chains. We think that is, it is an industry uh, challenge. We have to do 
what's possible to do. In other case, IMO, EU, will force us to do it. So there is no, no other ways out of it. No other ways out of it. And right now, we are doing each uh, half year, we are doing something. And right now, we are doing, uh, of course, uh, environmental friendly supply chain <laughs> with our clients, which just in time is, is one of the biggest things. We are trying to increase it, not, not only uh, with Prime Voyage and or Neo Voyage or Exxon Voyage. It's easier to do it Exxon Exxon or Prime Prime or Neo Neo. But if uh, Exxon Bipi, Prime Bipi, then it's a little bit hard. But that we are working very hard to try to find something around. On Sunday we are going in with Tambris and installing SAR on the auxiliary engines and uh, that, that will reduce the NOx with Edelton Sugarham 20, around 20,000 kilo per year uh, and uh, <coughs> we think it, it's quite a big investment on a vessel 10 years old. But if we go back on the original uh, slide, it, it, it reduces our footprints. And we, cannot, we can say the technology is there. It's, it's nothing, it's working. We start 2011 and pushed bottom together with, with GESAB, a company from Gothenburg. And then we have been on two ground each single hour since 2011. Each single hour, uh, 4,500 hours per year. And it's nothing technically problem at all. And uh, with, uh, to do it on auxiliary engine, we can almost say that even if it's quite a big money, it belongs to the low-hanging fruit. We have uh, been looking at shore power together with Gothenburg, uh, and uh, we will see. At least we are trying to see if we can do something there. And then we have what we have men I mentioned already, uh, the four new buildings. It was the world first LNG driven tankers. And uh, it's only LNG on the main engine. It's a bachelor dual full engine. But we have the catamizer, uh, which are combined uh, heat exchanger, heat recovery system, and SAR in the same bottom, in the same can. And it's working very well. It's cost. 30% higher than a conventional vessel. So you need to have good bank contact, you need to have... <laughs> <laughs> you need to have clients which are with you. In other case, it's impossible. And, the, and uh, yes, that's for sure. Uh, we are operating in the egg area. We are, are saying that Tunsi is the middle of the world uh, very often. And, uh, but when it comes to Ega, we are in the middle of the world. Uh, it's the same distance to St. Petersburg that it is to Land's End. Then you can feel that what is the middle of Ega. <laughs> <laughs> this is, uh, we call it a scruta bit. <laughs> and here, here we have the result of it. We, Mon was mentioning it, and a lot of speeches <coughs> has already talked about it. Socks, of course, it's going down to 99. Uh, Nox, we have mentioned LNG itself, and also the SER on the auxiliary engine, 
So we lower it with 97%. 40% on CO2. That is uh, little, I, we have to explain. 20% we have heard from other speeches is in the LNG itself. 20% of this is the hull and propeller and the main engine. A uh, vessel in a similar size, 15,000 ton, 14 knots, uh, are burning 21, 22 tons, uh, up to 25. Uh, we know, uh, we know 100, 150 vessel consumption. We was a part of the Brewstone system, so therefore we know each single liter what their competitors are burning. So. Uh, uh, and uh, we are operating uh, the same speed and the same, uh, same criteria. We are around 15 tons on LNG, 14.8. And that is uh, 500 kilo uh, dual uh, gas oil, 300 kilo per day, yes. So, they've been able to reduce the uh, diesel quite a lot. Particulars, we are at the LNG itself. Noise, noise has been a big issue for us. We are uh, quite frequent in, in uh, Brufjord, and there we are lying at Anchorage. And uh, during sim summertime, the uh, decision people, the high people, the, the, they are living on Malmö and they don't want, don't want to listen on our auxiliary engines. <laughs> they want to have silence around them. And uh, for sure, we shall be a part of, of it. So we, we are saying to them, okay, we shall be there and you shall be there also. Uh, and I can promise, if we are not doing that, we are the ones who have to left. <laughs> Not them. <laughs> you are right, yeah. <laughs> uh, we was not only LNG and not only gas. Uh, we have tried to take 60 years of uh, development in the company. We have tried to implement in each single area of the vessel. So. The green is, of course, the environmental. Uh, the red is a, a energy efficiency, which the whole is remarkable. Uh, what the designers has been able to do with the hull. Uh, when I talked about that, and I talk, mentioned 21, 22 tons down to 15 tons, I'm always scared to death that the public are saying, what the heck have you done the last 20, 40 years? Uh, but I think, that's of my personal, it is all of us who has been working many years, uh, during 18s, during 17s, during 80s, be, beginning of 90s, all of us had some kind of computer system which was not working, not working at all. That was the, it was the, in the beginning of everything. Uh, this was, this was, and when we designed a vessel, either it was FKAB, this is Rolls Royce, they went to a basin, and then they said, oh my holy God, it's almost as in the computer. Almost as in the computer, they say. When we was going down to Holland with this vessel, me and Usten and Klaus were sitting, oh, is it according? And the uh, Rolls Royce was sitting, it is according to computer, they say. It is 100% according to the computer, not 99. And then, if they have this kind of tool, they of course have much, much better possibility to, to get it right in the computer then do it in the basin and then go back home and do it like that. Now they have do, done the vessel in the computer and you get the confirmation in the basin. That is the difference. And 
Of course, it's much cheaper to do it in the computer. We are very glad that we was able to get Coralius up and running. And we are very glad that Port of Gothenburg has been so open-minded to make safety rules around the bunkering in Gothenburg. Because the first year we was in service, it was terrible to get LNG. It was uh, not on the vessel which are going to Norway. That, that, that vessel, two vessels are, are going into Rizavika, uh, where, where the LNG is coming in from Skagas. So it, it was quite okay, but the other vessel, we was with trucks. Trucks is very complicated on a tanker vessel because the, the truck is not allowed to, to go on the jetty. It's far, far away. So it was terrible. But when Coralius was up and running and uh, the safety criteria was made by Gothenburg Harbor and us and Sirius, it's, it's uh, going. It's a self-playing piano. Our vessel are now bunkering each single week, and we at the office don't have a clue when it's happened. No, they are not informing us. We need incentives. Uh, I mentioned that the vessel is 30% uh, more expensive than a conventional vessel. And it's not possible to us to go to Prim, to Exxon, to Neot and say you have to pay for it because we think it's too far to build it. That's not the way to do it. We need incentives. Even if it's small, we need incentives in more places. And we have the Knox Fonden in Norway, which are doing it, something happened. And we are very glad. Where is Gotham Harbor? Where are you? But you know, Port of Gothenburg, there you are. That we have uh, LNG rebet and also 10% uh, on the CSI. It is it's not a huge amount of money, but uh, when we come to Neo to come to Pri and say, at least these guys are with us, and, uh, and as long as they feel that, okay, we do this because we think it's right. But we, we it, it's, it's several parties who can share a little of it. It's much easier for them to pay, let's say, 15, 20 percent over the market if they feel there is other guys also who is contribute. They don't want to save the world by themselves. So once again, Porter Gothenburg, thank you. And uh, we will scream until we have bigger in incentives. Uh, we are, are a little bit older. We all remember Folke Pudas. He was lying in a box in, got in Stockholm until he got what he wants. So maybe we have to do that also. <laughs> so. In the hard situation, it's not fair that the industry take all the responsibility for just trying to do more sustainable shipping. There has to be other stakeholders as commune and governments and so on. And look at Knox Fonden. You can Google on Knox Fonden and found how much uh, they have been able to reduce the Knox, the Kveve. So, in incentives you have already heard. And uh, that is not, as long as Coriolis is around us, the bottleno bottleneck is not there. But if we can get incentives and if we can get other stakeholders to all to contribute a little, we can promise that we will not stop. We will continue to try to uh, earn money and try to do the transportation as uh, with as low footprints as ever possible. Thank you.